in UC Berkeley and among the grad students. And also from my own experience working in the labs at UC Berkeley, MATLAB really was kind of the standard language that we were using to write programs for modeling stuff and graphing and all these other things. So uh, MATLAB was really kind of just like, you have to know this to finish your education here. And if you wanted to be involved with the research, again, it was something that was the expectation. And for me, when I started working in industry, I, you know, I started working at this startup biotech company and you know, I'd also been doing job interviews to to look at what it could be like at other places. And what I was learning along the way was that, you know, while maybe some people are using MATLAB, the vast majority of work is being done in Python. And this was, you know, my experience, but, you know, I interviewed at a lot of places around the Bay Area. And a huge reason why Python is so much more valued or favored than MATLAB had to do with the fact that MATLAB has insanely high licensing costs. So if your employer wants to use MATLAB, they're going to have to pay thousands of bucks a year to get you a license so that you can write MATLAB scripts and run, you know, the the little plugins and these other add-ons that they make. And so it's a very expensive tool. It's not to say it's not valuable, but it is a very expensive tool to use. And the alternate side to that is, you know, Python and and Python is just, in my opinion, a wonderfully open source scripting language that is available to so many people. And because of that, you have a great network of developers for it. So even though you, MATLAB themselves spent the money and time to develop their own ODE 45 method, Python has a bunch of other people out there who are also developing their own ODE int solvers for you, and you don't have to pay for any of it. And so you know, there's that part. Another huge part of this has to do with the fact that, you know, along your journey, when you're trying to solve some problem, you're going to get stuck and you're going to need help figuring out exactly like what are the inputs to this function? What are the expected outputs? And again, I'm being reminded from, as I look back on this, the value of open source, because it just attracts so many more people to use it that they've probably had that same problem in the past. I'm not saying you won't get that same experience with MATLAB, but it'll be a much more small subset of those people because so many people are using Python all the time and so many people are using these, you know, the, the open source packages uh, or libraries that, that Python offers that it's it's pretty easy to get free support for these things. So especially if you're doing solo work and you just want to see what you can do on your own before you start talking about bigger dollar investments, Python, again, really is just this better platform to be scripting on in my opinion and i'm not saying like you can't do this in matlab it'll just be more expensive and potentially it'll be harder and so like this is really the trade-off and and to me like you know you'll hear a very similar story in industry with stuff like microsoft versus linux you know linux being so much more open source friendly than microsoft but with microsoft you're paying them and because of their size and their sales reps they're able to have influence in areas that you know, I, 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 I don't know. It's, it's definitely a dense topic. Um, but I just wanted to share my thoughts on this. And then a final thing I'll note here is that like in my career, I started out as a chemical engineer and I was working in biotech and now I'm a software engineer, basically, uh, working at Amazon. And so the only reason why I was really able to make that pivot was because of Python, like because of the 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 number of people on YouTube, like Corey Schaefer, who provide resources to people that explain how to do stuff in Python, like create a Flask web application right in Python, or you know how to use NumPy or SciPy or Matplotlib in Python, like all these free packages that anyone can download and use and play around with, like that network of support that is available to you for free and the the number of packages out there that are available to you for free and that are also always evolving and getting more features and fixing bugs to me is unbeatable and I love it and I'm a strong advocate for that. And, you know, if I could talk to the academic advisory boards in my school or, you know, the people who construct the curriculums, um, I, I would I would start pushing them a lot harder to try to move away from the sales pitches that they get from MATLAB and to instead try to push their students to look more to open source things like Python because the matter of fact that I've seen in industry is that 
much more often stuff is being done in Python just because of the number of developers, the popularity of the language, uh, and, and the, the fact that it's, it's open source and free at the end of the day for a lot of things uh, is, is really incredible. So uh, I just wanted to, to make that remark and say that, you know, in my own career, I feel like Python has helped me immensely. I, I can't, you know, in terms of how, I, how did I even get to be a software engineer, Python is a huge part of that. It's just being able to teach yourself a scripting language, implement it, create an actual tool that you can use in a production environment and still not have spent any money in licensing for MATLAB uh, is really awesome if you can just do this in Python, which honestly, I think you can do pretty much everything you do in MATLAB in Python. Um, so it's, it's, those are my opinions. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will talk to you guys next time.